Like it's already week 13, and the race for the playoffs is well underway. We've got to break this down. Matt Hamilton, get on in here because you are my compass of the playoff picture. You always give me the best little nuggets. What else to happen if this ipso facto carried the one? Check the wind direction. You do the whole thing for me. And it's also a fun time of year. It's almost December, and there's this thing called Spotify Wrapped that everybody talks about. And it basically, Spotify spits out the music that you listen to the most, what songs, what artists, and everybody sort of roasts each other's personal musical preferences, which I really enjoy. And listen, I like Dolly Parton a lot. Back off, everybody. Uh, so there's a new thing this year called Make Your Own Coachella Lineup with Your Faves. It's a template. It's trending. Marissa came up with this awesome idea to join it with the playoff picture. But here is what we're talking about. It's the Rissy Minaj Fest. They spit this out based off of your musical preferences. I mean, what do you think, Hammy? I mean, the first thing that jumps out is to have a, a username based off of Nicki Minaj. And I noticed <laughs> Nicki Minaj is is not on the poster. No, no. So, and Drake followed by Elvis Presley is a, it just shows the range that Marissa has. Yeah, she really does. I mean, J. Cole and Casey and the Sunshine Band, are they performing together? Who's who opening for who? What stage? Main stage side? I mean, Casey and the Sunshine Band, I'm obsessed. And Jungle making the list is hilarious because we played so much Jungle in August trying to figure out what the name of the show or what the song for the show was going to be and that's what we wanted this like retro thing so I know for a fact that's why that's on there so Marissa brought this to my attention and then I thought and she thought like we've got to make our own situation up and Adams playoff style Burrow and the Bengals Josh Allen wheeling and dealing the Niners coming in hot it is all music to these ears so these teams they're all playing in sweet sweet symphony right about now let's do it even though every spot isn't booked solid hammy there's a good chance that you'll see some of these teams perform in the postseason. So let's put it in the machine and spit it out. Yup, this is the AFC Playoff Picture Fest lineup. So, man, listen, I'm buying the VIP parking for this thing. This is amazing. <laughs> this, this would be a sweet, sweet gig. I would buy the advanced pre-sale tickets with the VIP package to this show right here. I'm paying the $18 beer with like the, the head of foam seven inches at the top. Fine, here's the deal. You've got your AFC teams that deserve the top bill. They are selling out arenas. They're going on tour. They've made it to the main stage as headliners, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Miami Dolphins, Mac McDaniel in a Hawaiian shirt doing the hula. Absolutely, Tennessee Titans and Baltimore Ravens. The Chiefs, by the way, leading the way. They're the one seed at nine and two. All right, let's dissect this bad boy further. These acts are ready to hit the stage, but they're not getting like the premier time slots, right? As the sun is setting. No, 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 they're sweating bullets in the hot sun. They're the openers. The Buffalo Bills, you know, they're they're performing music while people are fighting, making out, trying to put their picnic you know, blankets <laughs> out uh, where they need to be. These are the Buffalo Bills, the Bengals, and the New York Jets. And you love to see it, the AFC opening acts. Uh, the Bills and Bengals, by the way, can move up shortly. They're tied atop their respective divisions in wildcard spots thanks to tiebreakers. And then finally, yep, this is when I show up for the warm-up DJs. I want, I want to be there for the crowd, getting going. They don't have merch yet. They're dreaming of just, let's make enough money so we can make merch. They want to make the bright light marquee someday. These are your supporting acts, the New England Patriots, the Los Angeles Chargers. Hamilton, the AFC is alive and well. It really is, and and those are two good teams, those Patriots and Chargers, sitting on the outside of that playoff picture right now. Uh, they're they're both trying to fight for a yeah. wild card start, spot. So I want to start with the Patriots with you. What do you think needs to happen for us to see them ascend to that main stage or maybe one of those supporting acts? It's so funny because this is somebody. The Patriots are different. Like the Chargers are like Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga used to, in 2007, Lady Gaga's on the side stage. No, no security, no whatever, she's doing her thing. And that's the Chargers, like, finally let them get, but the Patriots, like, they're Bruce Springsteen. They're Bruce Springsteen relegated to the side stage of some festival, it's super weird. So if they wanna go regain greatness, it's got to start with a win tomorrow night. It is a must win at Gillette Thursday night football kicking off week 13. This is their first of two meetings with the Bills. The schedule is Blech, going down the stretch for the Patriots. In addition to those two Bills games, Hammy, they got the Bengals, they got the Dolphins. The Dolphins have had their number, as we know. And two, I guess the easier games we want to talk about, that's the Cardinals and the Raiders, and those are both on the road. Yikes. 
I will say what gives me hope is what we have seen when I talked to Tom Curran about last night on Quick Slants up there in Boston. Mac Jones looks good. If you look at what he did the past two weeks even, I know it's a small sample size. He's been on a bit of a tear. He's completing over 77% of his passes. Listen, the girls are throwing their bras on the stage for Mac Jones. I'm telling you, <laughs> he's ranking second in the league in yards over that span. So if he plays like this, he can get them in. He could put on a little, El I watched the Elvis movie the other night. Listen, he can make a little something happen. He can move his hip and everybody starts sw swooning. Uh, but I mean, you tell me, legit, it's an uphill battle. Yeah, it's going to be hard, and they have to solve that Bills problem. You're right. And you look at the other quarterbacks in the AFC and the way they're playing right now, and really it's going to take an incredible effort from Mac Jones. Uh, but let's move to the Chargers now. Okay. I know it's an uphill battle for the Char for the Patriots. Do you think the Chargers can find their way into this thing? Uh, I th uh, between the two of them, the Chargers have the easier path. Look at what's going on here. They only played two playoff teams over their final six, and they are getting healthier. They're missing guys, right? So we've seen, listen, when Keenan Allen's out there, what he can do to make life easier for Justin Herbert is, uh, you know, that's music right there. He's posted two of his three highest passer ratings of the season over the two games with Keenan Allen back in the lineup. And we're seeing them come through clutch moments, too. The two-point play, a brilliant decision, executed, by the way, two perfection. That is Staley written all over it, and that is confidence in this team. We expected the Chargers to fade away when they got banged up. They always fade away when they get banged up, but guess what? They did not. And now they are getting healthy. It's week 13. They're getting healthy at the right time. So I do think we see LA go on a run, and I think Herbert does get to the playoffs for the first time in his young career. And he's got the hair for the main stage. <laughs> He definitely does, and I, I just I love the way that they're playing right now. I think you're right. Keenan Allen has made such a huge impact on that team since coming back, and uh, you know a lot of people are taking shots at Herbert right now. I don't yeah. necessarily love that and think that's deserved with what he's played through and all the injuries that team has had. Uh, but it's all coming together right now, and I think this is this is a crucial crucial stretch for that team going forward because. I think in, in year three for Herbert, he's he's got to get into the playoffs. Didn't it, they just it get reflexed? Didn't right they now. just get reflexed into Sunday night? They did. They did. So uh, I think there's big expectations from everybody for this. And that's who? Them and the Dolphins? Yes. Yep. Okay. And so. that's week four. Week fourteen. 14, I believe, yeah. Well, I think it's the first time the Dolphins have been flexed into Sunday night since literally 2006 when I was at Lollapalooza getting drunk and playing chicken uh, in the lawn of Grant Park in Chicago. Uh, we're going to hit the NFC in a little bit. Hit us up. A great job by Marissa McBride on those graphics and the idea, but we've got Mark Ingram to get to. Listen, a guy hits Sean McVay cold in his jaw. Red card?